Hi, it's Dwyer. Second video of the day. It's Sunday, November the 25th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, free site. Bettingangle.us, free site. You know, I was just trying to catch up on boxing and I had a video playing in the background. It was Alexander Ustinov's loss to Michael Hunter. Right? This is a very important fight. The film is in my favorites folder right now. You want to watch this fight while you have an opportunity. I don't know how long it's going to stay online. Understand, Michael Hunter, decorated amateur, has only lost once as a professional. And that's to a fighter we all know, Alexander Usyk. Right? The former, well, hell, he's the current unified cruiserweight champion. He just beat Tony Bellew. Right? Now, let me just say, this is a thesis of mine that I think's about to pay off big at heavyweight. Right? I believe we're in a flat-footed giant era where hand speed doesn't matter that much. Where the guys are pot shotters, all of them, all of them are trying to, excuse me, knock out the other person, right? I'm talking about the guys with the belts. I understand Tyson Fury is a little bit more advanced, right? But Tyson's lineal. He doesn't have a sanctioning body belt. We'll say Anthony Joshua. We'll say Deontay Wilder, right? Let me even throw in Manuel Char. Right, guys with belts. I believe all of them are looking to outslug you. Right, they're not looking to outmaneuver you with hand speed, outpoint you. Right, Deontay Wilder, quite frankly, is in there for the KO. And let's face it, only one of his fights has gone the distance. Anthony Joshua, same type thing. Very few fights on his resume have gone the distance. Very few. The Joseph Parker fight. Now, these guys are vulnerable, in my opinion, to speed, timing, movement. Right? In other words, the heavyweight division goes through cycles. Right? Guys are giants. Then along comes Jack Dempsey, right? It's like the Jess Willard era. Suddenly, here is Jack Dempsey, and he's just too cat quick. The other guys just can't catch up to him, right? Sonny Liston is the man. Along comes Ali, right? It's a shift every few years. So right now, we're in a giant era. An Alexander Ustinov era. He, to me, exemplifies this era. Now, he was fighting Michael the Bounty Hunter, right? I believe this is the son of the original Michael the Bounty Hunter, right? This is Michael Hunter Jr. And the tip-off for this fight, they tell you Hunter took the fight on short notice. And the tip-off for this fight, is when the camera goes to his corner, you notice former heavyweight champion Haseem Rockman in the corner. So you're thinking, well, wait a moment, who's this guy? How does he have a former heavyweight champion in his corner, right? For those who recall, Rockman famously knocked out Lennox Lewis back in the day, right? Well, folks, these guys didn't show up for a payday. Even though Michael Hunter is a last-minute replacement. Literally, takes the fight on day's notice. You notice early he has a game plan. And that game plan involves speed movement. Right? Going to the canvas when the big man leans on him. He has it all figured out. And getting inside, staying low, then coming up with a pinpoint right hand. Right, folks? He wins the fight by stoppage. 
You notice Ustinov, who is 41 years old, but Ustinov is just too slow. He is just too slow to deal with Hunter's movement and craftiness. You'll also notice that Hunter has some, you know, techniques that he uses. So the big man comes in to grab him. You'll notice Hunter always has something between him and Ustinov. In other words, he knows he's too fast for this big guy. This big guy is going to have to grab him. He's going to have to slow down the fight, and he can't do it using lateral movement. Right? These are big guys living off power. So Ustinov can't use lateral movement, even though years ago Ustinov had great legs. That's gone now. So Hunter is prepared. In other words, when Ustinov comes in to grab him, you'll notice Hunter gets low. He's hard to find to grab. Then when Ustinov grabs him, Hunter often has things in the way. His shoulder, right? An arm. You know, he's, he's leaning like this. So then you notice, too, that as Ustinov comes to grab him, Hunter continues to throw punches. Now, guys like Hunter, who was badly outweighed in the fight, badly outweighed, Guys like Hunter are not on anyone's radar right now for the title at heavyweight. I believe his corner took this fight. Again, this is a guy who was a decorated amateur. This is a guy whose father was a fighter. This is a guy who's 30. Right? I believe he's older than Anthony Joshua. Right? I believe his corner has figured out that some of the guys at the top of the heavyweight division right now are just too slow for the lighter guys. I keep pointing out here online, Maris Breedis knocked out Manuel Char. KO'd him. Char is unconscious at the end of that fight. Too much speed, too much elusiveness. I know Eddie Hearn is trying to drum up support for an Usyk-Joshua fight, right? And he's going to have Usyk fight some other heavyweights. My point to you is, what's the point of that? The question right now, right now, is whether Anthony Joshua, who's bigger than Usyk, who's slower than Usyk, who doesn't have Usyk's foot speed. The question right now is whether Anthony Joshua would know what to do if he's in against a higher volume, sharp, faster man who he can't clinch, who he can't catch, right? Who he has to if he's going to chase, get out of his construct, open himself up defensively. For the kind of counters that Usyk has made a living on. Right? Understand, folks, Usyk has already beaten the reigning gold, excuse me, the reigning Olympic guy from the United Kingdom, Joyce. Usyk's already beaten him. Right? I think right now we're hearing guys in heavyweight fights, weight 250, 260. I think right now we've been blinded by this Lennox Lewis, post-Lennox Lewis era where big men, Lewis, Vitaly, Vladimir, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder have had the belt, right? And we're starting to think, oh, bigger is better, right? We've forgotten. We've just flat out forgotten the Jack Dempsey's. The Rocky Marcianos, the Joe Frazers, the Mike Tysons of the sport. Shorter guys who are hard to find, who hit hard, who can turn over a punch. Right? So, folks, I need for you to consider Michael 
Hunter. This guy looks like he would be a problem for a Deontay Wilder or for an Anthony Joshua. Let me go one step further. If, as I suspect, Tyson Fury undresses Deontay Wilder, right? Let's say Fury wins the heavyweight title, right? Or, excuse me, expands his lineal championship to annex the WBC version of the belt, right? Let's say Tyson Fury reaffirms his dominance. Who's fast enough at heavy right now to beat Tyson Fury? I'm guessing Fury would have far more problems, believe it or not, with an Usyk, or a Maris Breedis, or a Michael Hunter, than he would with Lucas Brown, right? Dylan White. Keep in mind, Fury's already beaten Derek Chisora, right? The, the current crop of heavyweights, I'm just telling you, wouldn't give Fury the problems that a mobile heavyweight would give him. Quite frankly, I think fast-handed Andy Ruiz would give a lot of these guys problems. The problem with Ruiz is he doesn't have the feet to match the hand speed, right? But just understand, don't be fooled by what looks to be the inevitability of the current crop of heavyweights, right? Go back and look at the weights of Ali and Fraser the first time they fought. Keep in mind, Ali wins the belt in the mid-60s. Right? Just, just think about it. Neither guy, I believe, weighed even 215 for that fight. I believe they're both very light by today's standards. And you had big men back then, guys like Buster Mathis, You've always had huge guys in boxing. As I said, Jack Dempsey beat Jess Willard, for crying out loud. Right? You've had some big men. I'm just telling you, a good small man who's hard to find in the ring, as Joe Lewis found out, when he got knocked out the ring by Rocky Marciano. I know that's not prime Joe. Trust me, I know that's not prime Joe. Right? But let's remember, Lewis always had a problem with speed. Max Schmeling lands on him earlier in Lewis's career. Right? Billy Kahn gives Lewis all he can handle. Right? Just understand right now, I believe a lot of what you're seeing is an illusion. Deontay Wilder better hope that Tyson Fury has slowed down. If Prime Fury shows up for that Wilder fight, that might be a shutout. Usyk doesn't need, doesn't need any tune-up fights, any, to know today that he's competitive at heavyweight with Wilder and with Anthony Joshua. Right? Joshua's people are saying, we want to fight Wilder. They know Tyson Fury brings too much movement, right? Dare I say, if Tyson Fury gets in a left-handed stance, he probably takes away Joshua's jab. He might be able to beat Joshua left-handed. So take a hard look at Michael Hunter. If I'm Haseen Rockman, right? Hunter's now in heavyweight. He has stopped Ustinov. The fight could have been stopped earlier than it was stopped. By the way... <laughs> The beating so bad, Ustinov's corner throws in the towel, <laughs> right? Think about it. They throw in the towel, right? I, all I can say is a guy like this is going to pose a big threat 
to these big clunky guys at heavyweight. It's also going to bring back the relevance of hybrid fighters like Alexander Ustinov. Right? Just, you know, don't fall in love with the current status quo. That's like falling in love with the world before the first iPhone. Right? Stuff changes. Right? Just consider this to be a period in boxing. Right? These heavyweights might not survive a cruiserweight invasion. Food for thought. The video, Ustinov against Michael Hunter, is in my favorites folder right now. Just look at how slow Ustinov looks. And then ask yourself the question, am I sure that Anthony Joshua is that much faster? Right? Am I sure that Deontay Wilder would be able to deal with this speed with a guy who is clever enough to get low and then get close? Right? Which wouldn't give Wilder enough room for that straight right hand. Hope you give it a look. Thanks for stopping by.